Dr. Stein is a medical physician of internal medicine, and she is a major advocate of environmental health issues and is currently the in the process of exploring another presidential run for the Green Party. And many may remember that she was arrested for not being permitted attendance to the Obama-Romney debate, and then later her arrest for supporting protesters, bringing food and Halloween candy against the Keystone Pipeline in Texas. And during her presidential run in 2012, she was endorsed by Noam Chomsky and Chris Hedges and received enough votes making her the most successful woman presidential candidate in U.S. history. And Dr. Stein is a Harvard Magna Cum Laude graduate, and over the years she's been active in Massachusetts campaigns to better protect women and children from toxic pollution that has been associated with learning disabilities. She's also on the National Board of Directors, the organization Physicians for Social Responsibility, favoring a national universal health care program. And she's with us now. Nice to have you with us today. It's great to be with you, Gary, and thank you for all your incredible and wonderful work for health, justice, and democracy. Thank you. Well, I'd like to get your perspective on some things today, and particularly since we have The Nation magazine, Mother Jones, MSNBC, other bastions of, um, of the corporate liberal and democratic establishment who do not take favorably to your running. In effect, they're looking at you and saying, well, she's the Ralph Nader of this current election cycle. And, and I stop for a moment, I think, would you is, what does that mean exactly? And, uh, and, of course, they blame Nader for Al Gore's loss. And for, after that, he became persona non grata. And uh, he just couldn't get himself into any of the discussions. And I, I want to deal with them not allowing third candidate, candidate parties onto the forums to debate with the, the mainstream uh, Republican and Democratic contenders. And I want to start with Bernie Sanders. I looked at his entire voting record. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I looked at her entire voting record. Now, though she is not uh, a firm that she is running at this moment, Elizabeth Warren, I looked at her entire voting record. And where on some issues, Bernie Sanders does come down on the environment. I think he's done a good job. And protecting Social Security, I think he's done a good job. But he is pro the Patriot Act. He is pro Israel. He is pro uh, the military industrial complex. He is pro the military budget. He is pro all of these very draconian rules. And so. I don't see that there would be a whole lot of difference between him and Hillary Clinton. Uh, and your thoughts on that, please. Great. And, you know, you, you pose a number of really important questions there. And before jumping into uh, Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren's record, just a brief comment on, you know, the, the response of the sort of liberal, quote liberal, you might say neoliberal, um, intelligentsia, the nation, Mother Jones, etc. You know, I have not seen their positions on my campaign this year, uh, perhaps because we, you know, are still in this exploratory phase. But, you know, I think those who engage in sort of continued nader bashing and the effort to silence political opposition. You know, above all, I think they just label themselves as obsolete. Nobody under 30 understands what that's about, but they do understand that we are in an incredible crisis in our economy, in our ecology, in our democracy. It's a massive crisis that really demands solutions as big as the problems that are crashing down on us. And to try to suppress this discussion and the responsibility of the Democrats as well as the Republicans. You know, Obama continued the policies of George Bush in so many ways, and we can get into that if, if, if you'd like. But this whole effort to silence that discussion about the culpability of the Democrats as a fully Wall Street-sponsored party, every bit as much as the Republicans, uh, you know, that does not permit uh, real solutions to even get on the table, witness the way they silenced the discussion of single-payer, totally 
you know, did a bait and switch and took it off the table so they could ram through the, um, you know, Obamacare, also called Romney Care, you know, which has doubled the out-of-pocket expenses of working people in America. You know, that's the people who would silence this discussion and the responsibility of Democrats like Republicans, you know, I think just label themselves as irrelevant to the real struggles that face uh, the vast majority of Americans right now. So, you know, we could go into that discussion, but I think it only matters to people with gray hair who are sort of leading the way into the sunset right now and not leading the real uh, revolt that's taking place across America, in our communities, in our places of work, in our schools, in the street, and that revolt needs to take place in the voting booth if the other revolts are to amount to anything as well. So that just by way of an introductory comment. Um, and then, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, Sanders or, or Warren, where would, where would you like to start? Let's start with uh, Warren first. Okay. So, you know, Elizabeth Warren, number one, she's not running. And she's a team player with the Democratic Party. So she's not going to run. Uh, you know, and I think that that sort of needs to be the first order of business when talking about Elizabeth Warren, that she's not running. What she's hoping to do is move Hillary Clinton's rhetoric to the left. And if you want to believe in Hillary Clinton's rhetoric, I say more power to you. Uh, it's probably not worth a lot of time <laughs> trying to change your mind if your mind can't be changed by reality. And uh, just a side comment there that, you know, it's history that really changes people's minds. Many sociologists uh, have documented how hard it is to actually change people's minds. People tend to lock in to emotional positions. But what really does change people's minds now is the course of history. And the course of history, both by way of the economy and the climate and the environment, has so made the case that, um, you know, where we are politically is very stuck. Uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, we've learned through Barack Obama through eight painful years um, going on that, you know, the rhetoric and the reality really have to be looked at very differently. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We've been fooled a couple times with Barack Obama. Um, I think it's important not to get fooled by any rhetorical changes um, that Hillary Clinton might offer. She has a very well-established track record, and she really has not wavered from that over the decades of her political career. So, you know, in terms of what Elizabeth might uh, offer in terms of changing Hillary's rhetoric, I think the, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the one's hopes ought to be extremely limited there. But if you look at Elizabeth's policy themselves, uh, you know, it, it gives good reasons for caution. She does have good uh, policies and experience and track record on banking reform and consumer protection. But outside of that, you know, she's a pretty standard centrist Democrat. Uh, she basically supports uh, GMOs. She basically supports corporate health care uh, and has not been a proponent of single payer, has not been a source of single payer legislation in the Senate. Uh, she is not a leader on climate action. She's a deficit hawk, and she's a war hawk who's basically supported Obama's extrajudicial killings, the kill list. She's expressed uncritical support for uh, Israel's war crimes in Gaza, uh, their ongoing occupation and suppression, uh, and really war on the human rights of the Palestinian people. So, you know, I think one ought to be extremely sober uh, in mobilizing for Elizabeth Warren uh, because her own policies are uh, ought to give any person with their eyes open uh, real cause for uh, concern. Okay, and Bernie Sanders? Well, you know, on Bernie, um, several of the same policy uh, concerns hold. Um, that is, you know, Bernie also refrains from uh, criticizing Israel. He supported the massacre in Gaza. Uh, I don't know that he has stood up to uh, the ongoing occupation. Um, and, you know, uh, he's not been an advocate to hold uh, U.S. Uh, assistance to Israel uh, in check pending, uh, you know, compliance. Uh, on the human rights violations that Israel uh, is guilty of. Um, 
you know, uh, Bernie has not been a leader on climate, although he's, you know, he's proposed some reasonable stuff. And on health care, you know, his proposal in the Senate most recently has been to allow states 